Johnny Dollar. Johnny, this is George Hardy at Northeast Indemnity Association. Yes, George. Got a pencil and piece of paper? Sure. And write this down. Go ahead. 130-07-0583. Got it. So? He wants to see you. Who does? 130-07-0583 at State Prison. Oh. You know his name, George? No, but if it's who I think it is, well, Johnny... You just might find yourself going for the commission on 100,000 bucks. The CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Northeast Indemnity Association, Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the tip-off matter. Expense account item one is four sixty for a tank full of gas. Despite the fact that the state pen is only a few miles south in Wethersfield, a town with a population of about 20,000, where the father of our country once planned the historic Battle of Yorktown. In other words, George Washington slept there. An assistant warden led me not to one of the cell blocks, but to a screened-off corner in a hospital ward. The man who lay there was in his early 30s, but he looked a hundred, thin, drawn, emaciated, with the pallor of death on his face. It was a full minute before I recognized him as Turner McGackey, up for safe cracking, whom I hadn't seen since the day the judge handed out his term some ten years before. Pretty funny, huh, Dollar? I'm due to get out. Instead, I lay here dying. Oh, now, come on, come on. Who told you that, McGackey? Now, come on, don't you try and kid me too, Dollar. I ain't got long, and I know it. That's why I had him send for you, see. Maybe... Maybe you can stop a killing, Dollar. A killing? Yeah, from that safe job that got me in here. Well, that was ten years ago. Only they never found the loot from it, did they? Oh, I see. And you know where it is, Mac? Look, th th this ain't... This ain't easy, Dollar, me telling this, but you're the only one I... only one I got any respect for. Respect for me? Mac, I was partly responsible for putting you here. Yeah, I'm sure, Dollar. I hated your guts. Then I did. Only yesterday, the warden... He, he told me about what you've done for Tommy. My kid brother... About the home and foster folks you got for him. About you seeing he'd get educated. Like the way that I never did. He was a nice kid, McGackie. It's all because of you that kid has a chance to play it straight. Get somewhere. I think he will, too. He doesn't know about me. He didn't know I was there, Mac. There? Yeah. I stood in the crowd and I watched him graduate from high school. With honors. You'd have been proud of him, Mac. Yeah. Proud. And all the county you give him would... I couldn't never give him. Tommy deserved a chance like any other kid. That's all. Yeah, but the way you've done it. You're letting him think I'd been killed. Some kind of an accident. You're never letting them know about my record. What I really was. And now he's, he's got no spots on him. He's got nothing to live down to make him ashamed. And all this time, I, I didn't know about... about what you've done for him. I just kept hating you. 
but I didn't know. Look, Mac, that's all water under the bridge now. So now I'm going to make make up to you, Dollar. There's no need to, Mac. Look, look, you're getting tired. I uh, I better leave yeah, you now. Yeah, but the loot from that safe job, a hundred G's. Oh. So, listen. Well, I can... Listen. Real careful. Real careful, Dollar. about Joe Pirelli, an old crony of his. Pirelli now posing as a fisherman, living in Mac's old cottage on Peconic Bay, Long Island, near the town of Kutchog. He told me about a safe in the cellar of the cottage, and the fact Pirelli knew only half the combination to it. And the other half? Two weeks ago, when he'd found out that he was going to die, Mac had given the other half to a crook by the name of Danny Russeloff, who pulled the heist with him who was also there in the pen, who'd not only been a box man, but a killer. Okay, fine. Except for one thing. I wouldn't have told Danny. Not if I'd known then about what you'd done for my brother. Look, Mac. But now I, I do know. So it's you that... you that's gonna have that dough. No, it'll go to the insurance company, Mac. Look, if Danny gets to him first, Danny will kill Pirelli. Take it easy now. Don't get yourself too excited. Don't, don't you see? Having the whole combination between them. D Danny will get the dough. The... Danny will kill Pirelli. Well, look, if... Um, if you gave me the combination... Yeah. Yeah. All right, then. You, you, you'll, you'll give me your word. You, you'll protect Pirelli. Kind of his key, but that dough for me all this time. Mac, I'll do what I can for him. But first, while I'm here at the pen, I better get things straight with Danny Russeloff. No, Dollar. Danny's getting out of here t today. Getting out? You mean they're releasing him? Y yeah. So you, you got to go for that dough and now g go see Pirelli. Okay, Mac. I have a combination of the safe. Yeah. Yeah. First, it's right. Turn it right. Yeah. To num number. Dollar, I can't Mac. breathe. Mac. I'm calling Dollar. Come on, Mac. Help me. Orderly. Help me. Nurse. Nurse, get a doctor Help. in here. By the time the doctor got there, McGacky was dead. I asked the warden about Danny Russeloff then. Yes, Mr. Dollar, we sent him on his way about an hour ago. And all I can say is good riddance. Okay. Expense account item two, $150 for a plane, a charter job. We took off and headed south. How Dick Spidell, the pilot, ever managed to sit down among the sand dunes near Cutshog in semi-darkness, I'll never know. But after a walk of about a mile, I found the gas station. Item three, $20 for the gas jockey for the use of his stripped-down vintage car. Sure, man. You just negotiate that next turn left. You, you see it down there? And no. then, then you swing another left on the sandy road you come to, mm -hmm. and you stop when you make the bay. It's a beat-up old shack with a wore-out old pier in front of it. Okay. Oh, and if you don't see him around or he don't answer when you knock, warn in anyhow. It's probably because old Pirelli's liquored up like he mostly is and his fell asleep. All right, thanks. Oh, and, uh... Just be sure to get my car back here by midnight when I close up, huh? Right. Mike? Pirelli? Anybody here? Stop knocking down that door. Come on up and... Okay. All right, Pirelli, I... Oh. Yeah. You got a gun. Because I've been waiting for you. Uh, you got a lousy shot, Pirelli. I'll get you up. Okay, Danny, I give up. I give up. I give up, Danny. Danny, huh? 
Is that who you're waiting for with this gun? Danny Russeloff? Yeah. Yeah, I thought... I read Danny was getting out today. Who are you? Who are you, mister? My name is Dollar. Now sit down over there by that table. Yeah. What are you doing here? I've come to pick up some money, Pirelli. A hundred thousand dollars. No. From the safe in your cellar. No, you got no right to that. I haven't, huh? You think I didn't know what's in the safe? I'm sure you did. And it all better be in it now. That's Max, though. McGackies. He's dead, Pirelli. Only a couple of hours ago in the prison hospital. You're lying. You want to call him up and check on it? Dead. McGackies dead, huh? That's right. Oh. Now, half of that dough is mine. That's mine, Dollar. I don't think so. Oh, no. Dollar, huh? You, you Johnny Dollar? You're the insurance deck. That's that right. Is... And I'm here to get that money. Oh, no. I'm also here for another reason. Yeah? Like what? To save your worthless carcass if I can. You don't believe that, huh? I never trust no cop, I and mean, you're a cop. Look, Pirelli, get one thing straight. Personally, I couldn't care less what happens to you. I've got no use for you. A man with a record like you piled up over the years... Look, I paid for everything I've done. I served time. And for holding on to this hot money? My only reason for trying to keep Danny Russell off from killing you is because I promised McGacky I would. I can take care of myself. Like you did when I came barging in here? Okay, so maybe you... Maybe, Look, maybe, Danny maybe. Russell lost a killer, and, and he's got the other half of that safe combination. What? Yes, because McGacky gave it to him when he found out he was going to die. And you think Danny couldn't force your half out of you with a gun in your belly? If you refused to help him open that box? And then when he got the dough, he'd kill you. No, oh, I, 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 I still, still wouldn't... Wouldn't tell him my hat. He'd kill you anyway and then blow the safe. That used to be his business. So whatever happens, Pirelli, without me, you end up dead. Hey, Dollar, listen. Now, look, I know it'll mean breaking my word to McGacky, but if that's the way you want it, all I have to do is just sit on the sidelines, hey, wait for Danny to get here, for the safe to be open one way or another, see you get knocked off, and then move in on Danny. Yeah, okay, okay, but I... Maybe I can get him fresh. Sure. Go on. Try it. But if you do get lucky... If you do kill him before he kills you, I promise you one thing, Pirelli. I'll see you end up in the chair. Would you like to think about that for a while? Just don't take too long, though, hmm? Because I doubt if Danny's going to waste much time getting down here. And if I'm not around when he does get here... Well, Pirelli? Okay, okay. Well, what do you want me to do? Got enough food around here to keep us for a couple of days? Sure, I got plenty. All right, then I'm moving in. Have you got a phone? No. Only plenty of food and booze. Yeah, I can see that. Is there any other way to get here, Pirelli, besides the road that turns off near the gas station? Not unless somebody try to get here with one of those heliocopters. Mm. All right, then from the gas station, I can tell if somebody's heading in here. Huh? I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. Item four, back at the gas station, out on the highway, a hundred dollars even. A hundred bucks? Oh, for that man, I'll ride a bicycle or borrow my sister's car, and you can keep the old crate. No, Jimmy, I'll only need it for a day or two, I hope. All the time you want. Uh, and is there anything else I can do, Mr. Dollar? Just let me have a handful of change to throw at this payphone of yours. Item five, 380 for a call to George Hardy at his home back in Hartford. I gave him the whole story. Good, Johnny, good. I had a feeling it had to do with that safe-cracking job we had to make good on. Now, uh, how do I contact you down there? You don't. I'll have to contact you. What are you thinking of? Well, you said this Danny Russeloff hasn't shown up there yet. Not yet. Though he's had plenty of time by now. Maybe Danny's playing it smart now he's on parole. What do you mean? Well, he's supposed to report in here in Hartford where he used to live, isn't he? Probably. So he'll do that first to give a good impression. Make everybody think he's on the up and up. Maybe. And then, when he figures nobody's watching him anymore, then he'll make his move, right? Except that I can't see him wasting any time about getting his hands on the money, or at least making sure it's still here. 
So, George. Yes? Get hold of Pete Larkin. The private detective? Yeah. Tell him it's for me. Tell him if Danny is there in Hartford to keep an eye on him day and night. And if he leaves town, I want to know it so I can be ready for him. Okay. And uh, meanwhile, what will you be doing? Have you called on the police down there? I don't even know if they have any in this little town. What's more, a couple of cops prowling around would only scare him away, and I want to get him. I'll check back with you three or four times a day. Okay. And at least we know where that 100000 is now. Do we? Maybe I better get back out to Pirelli and make sure. The safe was still there in Mike Pirelli's cellar intact. And Mike himself? In the process of getting very, very drunk. But in answer to my question... Yeah, okay, okay. I, it's, it's only the last two numbers of the combination that I know. All right, what are they? Yeah, um... Uh, it's two, um, two turns to the right. Two turns to the right? Uh, to what number? Um, it's 80, 81. Two turns to the right to 81. Yeah. And then? Hey, listen, Tyler. And then, Mike? Yeah. Then left, um, left 14. Then left to 14. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Hey, listen, Tyler, I'm scared now. You got me scared. Give me a... Here, go ahead. Help yourself. Yeah. Maybe enough of that stuff will at least keep you... Hold it. Listen. What? Yeah. Hold it. What? Right. You hear that? What? Right. Yeah. He's the car out there. All right, let me douse these lights. You see it there? You know that car? No. Yeah, but it's him. It's Charlie. Be quiet. He's coming in here to kill me, Charlie. As the car pulled to a stop, I quietly slipped over to one side of the door and grabbed the knob. I drew my gun and waited. For a long moment, there was no sound out there. Then a car door opening and closing quietly. Then footsteps on the wooden sidewalk. And then as I felt in touch of the doorknob, I turned it and swung open the door. Say, what's the matter, man? What's going on here? Uh, why are you palming that cannon? Sorry, Jimmy, I was expecting somebody else. Man, I hope so. Hey, hey what happened to him, to old Pirelli? Oh, well, he... Uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see the jug now. Mm -hmm. Falling down drunk again, huh? Oh, but, uh, here. Here, Mr. Dollar. The reason I stopped by is I forgot to give you this key to the trunk of my car in case you need it. Oh. Okay, Jimmy, thanks. And, listen, I've been thinking. Mm -hmm. Your name is Dollar, huh? Johnny Dollar, that mm -hmm. investigator? Man, I think you're the most. Look, Jimmy, if Johnny Dollar was around here, if he was setting a trap for some crook... Yeah? And if anybody blabbed about it to anyone, Johnny Dollar might end up very dead. You understand that? Don't worry. Don't you worry. Just just let me know how you make out, will you? I'll let you know. Yeah. And thanks. Thanks, Johnny. Item six. In the next three days, $41 for more telephone calls to George Hardy. Yeah, Danny Russelloff was in Hartford, but sitting tight. So maybe George had been right. But how much longer I could keep old Pirelli under the influence without doing him serious harm began to worry me. And I was afraid that if he got sober, he might turn on me. Then the fourth day. And listen, Johnny. Uh, I mean, mister. As soon as you get through making that call, I want to tell you something. Yeah, okay, Jimmy, sure. And I hope you haven't been worried about my telling anybody you're here because I haven't told anyone. Hello? The George? Johnny Dollar? Yeah. Thank goodness you called. When I got back here from lunch, Pete Larkin, that private eye you had me call... Yes? Early this morning, Danny Russelloff got away from him. He did. Pete's lost him entirely. So, Johnny, if I were you... Okay, George. Now, uh, what I was going to tell you... Jimmy, I'm sorry. I haven't time now. But uh, about that other car that started down the road... Uh... What? Well, yeah, down at Pirelli's place. When? Well, about an hour ago. But then it came back to the highway. Did you get the license? Well, I didn't get the number. Uh, it was Connecticut, though. All right. And after he came back to the highway? Down that way. I see. Look, Jimmy, is there another road around here that goes to the bay? Yeah, the old fishing club below Pirelli's place. Okay. Here. A sawbuck? Yeah. But why? What did I do? I'll let you know. I 
started down the road to Borelli's. But no, because if it had been Danny, the reason he turned around to come back to the highway was because he'd seen my car there. So instead, I took the road to the fishing club. And there it was, beside the abandoned clubhouse, a rental job with Connecticut plates. Leading away from it were footprints in the sand, leading toward Pirelli's. As I got close to the cottage by crawling on my belly behind the sand dunes, I managed to work my way around to one of the windows. I waited and listened. Not a sound inside. A trap? Maybe so. Maybe Pirelli's still hoping for a crack at the hundred grand had taken a chance had gone over to Danny's side. Well, there's only one way to find out. I raised up just enough to look into the room. There on the floor lay Mike Pirelli. Dead. A bullet hole in his forehead. So he hadn't told his half of the combination. That meant there was only one way Danny could get the dough out of that safe now. And the door to the cellar was wide open. Yet if I tried to lift the noisy old window and climb in without some other sound to cover... But Danny himself gave me that. By the time the noise of his nitro job on the safe had died away, I was inside the house and halfway down the cellar steps. All right, Danny, raise him up over your head. Huh? Don't move. Get those hands up high. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, mister? Well, look. You reach for a gun, Danny, and I'll pull the trigger. Oh, no, you don't. You see this? This bottle, mister? Nitro. It's nitro, and I can throw it even with the slug in me, and you are dead. If I can hit that bottle from here. Now, back up. Drop the gun. You try throwing that bottle of nitro, Danny. Yeah, at you. Set it down now, gently. Set it down. No, no, I'm throwing it now. I'd heard of such things, but never before quite believed them possible. But so help me, when I picked myself up on the edge of the wreckage of that cottage, most of my clothes were blown completely off. And yet, by some miracle, I suffered no more than a couple of bruises and a slight headache. As for Danny, well, let's not go into that. He's paid for all his crimes. Expense account total, three forty-nine forty. And uh, don't forget my commission in spite of the fact that a lot of bits and pieces of that money had to be pasted back together. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Can you get premium gasoline performance at regular gasoline price? Find out what so many other car owners have found. In three out of five cars, regular-priced Sinclair Dino Gasoline matches performance of premium gasolines, saves you up to four cents a gallon. Almost anywhere you see the Sinclair sign, you can save up to four cents a gallon with Dino and still get premium performance and mileage. Drive with care and buy Sinclair Dino gasoline. Truly, Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Fred Hendrickson. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Jackson Beck, Joseph Julian, Jack Grimes, Bob Maxwell, and Peter Fernandez. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Sound patterns by Walter Otto. Tomorrow begins a new week's hilarity with Arthur Godfrey Time on the CBS Radio Network.